Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Salatu wassalamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een Praise due to Allah and blessings and peace be upon all of the messengers whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to this temporary abode I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast in iman and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgives our sins Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Marhaban bikum and welcome to Dars Quran International, your host Fazlul Islam Khan, Director of Islamic Marriage Solutions and Alhamdulillah we're here today on the sixth weekly program uh, related to marriage and marriage issues etc and we just want you to quickly revisit a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and where we left off from last week and that hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is to do with selecting a spouse. The Prophet Sallallahu said the Prophet said that a woman is normally married for four things. And then the Prophet mentioned these four things by saying that Limaliha, she is married for her wealth, Walihasabiha, for her lineage, Wali Jamaliha, for her beauty, Walidiniha, and for her deen. The Prophet has emphasized and he left it till last with regards to her deen, with regards to her religion, that this should be first and foremost when selecting a spouse and when looking for a spouse. Now, the Prophet ﷺ, just by the way, he said, a woman, in, woman is normally married for four things. And, and the reason why the Prophet ﷺ said a woman is married for four things and not a man is probably because when... A woman and a man are about to get married then the man is the person or is the one who normally makes that proposal and then the woman accepts so this is the custom and the araf that is prevalent nowadays so that is why the prophet Sassam perhaps uh, mentioned that a woman is married for four things anyway having said that within the uh, boundary and limits of the sharia etc of, of these characteristics and these aspects, maliha, wealth, wali, uh, wali hasabiha, lineage, wali jamaliha, the beauty, obviously for man it will be handsomeness, and wali diniha, and, and in, uh, in regards to their deen and their religion. These are also characteristics and aspects normally sought for when looking for a man as well. So the reason for mentioning a woman is perhaps because it is the one, it is the man who uh, makes that proposal and then the woman uh, says the qabul or the acceptance. So this is something that I just wanted to mention and these four things are normally sought for when selecting a spouse or when choosing a spouse etc. But I wanted to highlight and the Prophet ﷺ emphasized that He mentioned that the deen and the religion should be first and foremost and then the Prophet Sallallahu said, it's like a proverb in Arabic and he said that, look, if you do not choose or if you do not uh, make important the dini aspect of her or him, then may your, may, your, may your hands be at a loss. So in other words, it's like if you're not considering her dini aspect or his dini aspect, then, then that is a big loss. Because at the end of the day, and coming on to my next point, and that is the Prophet Sallallahu he has mentioned in a hadith part of the nikah sermon and khutbah in, the, in marriage in Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, al nikahu min sunnati, faman raghiba an sunnati falaysa minna. That performing marriages and nikah <clears throat> is part of my uh, practice. And the one who averts away from our practice and the one who turns away from our practice is not from amongst us. So that is why you see the dini aspect and the religion aspect of a spouse or a possible spouse etc is really important because the prophet sallallahu mentioned that look nikah and marriage in islam is from my practice now it is very important for each and every individual one of us who are about to get married who are thinking of their progeny to get married etc should think of nikah and marriage being a practice of the Prophet so the intention has to be right when a spouse to be has the intention right and the niyyah right surrounding their marriage and their wedding etc then inshallah 
their actions will be maqbul and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a husband and a, spa, uh, and a, and a wife to be make that firm intention with conviction that look we're doing this practice because it is a it, it was a practice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's emphasized on it and when we get married then inshallah we're going to try and stick uh, to the son of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in all walks of life in all departments of our life after marriage so when when we are performing our nikahs and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from each and in, each and every individual one of us is that whatever we do in our marriages and in our weddings etc we try to streamline all of those customs whether it's cultures and traditions and try and streamline those things and bring it within the boundary of the sharia and within the boundary of islam once that is there and once we do that then inshallah we will see that look there's always going to be a blessing a, a blessing in the marriage and a and a blessing in the the in the performing of the nikahs that we normally do so number one is that when a person gets married on the nikah day on the marriage day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless it and thereafter when we try and streamline whatever we do within the boundaries of Islam and we take into consideration all of the verses that were pertaining to marriage in Islam and all of the ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that are pertaining to marriage in Islam then we will see that in 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 our life, our married life, there will be a lot of blessings by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we continue. Um, I want to fast forward something here. And that is, you see, when a person goes to look for a spouse and when they are selecting a spouse, whether it's the family, whether it's the individual and, and whichever way they do it, it kind of varies because it really depends on which part of the world you are. Um, maybe there is a certain pra practice in a certain part of the world in terms of looking for a spouse in terms of selecting a spouse and, and wanting to get married to, to a certain per person etc it really varies between families and uh, 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 from families to families and and how they go about doing it maybe some families are okay with you know better are you or son or do you go uh, you know find a suitable f uh, spouse and, and you know if you're happy with it we're happy with it and things like that so it really varies from families to family so just that part inshallah we'll want to discuss that in another time but what i want to actually mention right here and inshallah we'll finish at this point is that there's one thing which is called arranged marriages and another thing which is called forced marriages now we understand what arranged marriages is just generally and uh, we understand what forced marriages is uh, we read it on the news etc but i want to make a distinction and i want to say that look there is some space there is place in islam for arranged marriage but a lot of people misunderstand it. And there is no place in Islam for forced marriages. But people also mis misunderstand that as well. So this is two things. Arranged marriages and forced marriages. Which inshallah in the future on a separate um, occasion I want to discuss it. Because I want to actually go into detail. Because there are a lot of people who read material online, uh, on newspaper, whatever. And they have this misunderstanding and they think that arranged marriage is forced marriages or forced marriages is something to do with arranged marriages. But these are totally two different things. And what Islam has place for is arranged marriages, but not forced marriages. So inshallah, we'll stop there. And that is something that I want to actually concentrate on and inshallah, give a clarification on for a lot of those people who um, have misunderstood or are misunderstanding this this very particular thing in Islam. So inshallah until then, uh wa akhru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.